Hi everyone, and thanks for logging on for this next installation of Volcano Awareness Month Talks. My name is Tricia Nadeau. I'm a research geologist and I head the gas geochemistry group at HVO, which is why I'm here today to talk to you about what was going on with gas emissions in 2021 at Kilauea. So I am going to cheat a little bit and start back in 2020 because that's when we had the first lava, the first eruption show up uh, since the big 2018 events. Um, so this video is just showing what was going on on the left uh, on, at Kilauea Summit on December 20th of 2020. So with all this new lava came a lot of gas. So if you look at the right, there's a plot of SO2 emission rate for just that little bit of December in 2020. I'm going to focus mostly on SO2 for this talk, sulfur dioxide. It's not the most abundant volcanic gas, that would be water and carbon dioxide, but sulfur dioxide is easier to measure than the other two, and it affects people downwind in terms of health issues and VOG the most. So we focus mostly on SO2. So you can see here in December, we started off very high with over 50,000 tons a day of sulfur dioxide, but it dropped quickly over the next few days. And then after a few days, we sort of leveled off here around five to 10,000 tons a day. Now, as that eruption progressed, things decreased even more. So he, January 1st is somewhere around here. So to the left is what I already showed you on the previous graph. And you can see that it was over 5,000 here and now we're getting closer to zero. But looking at this graph here, it's not the easiest way to view this data. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a change of scale on our next slide. So here's that same graph and each one of these lines on the left side here is 10,000 tons per day. But I'm going to switch to what's called a logarithmic scale. So instead of every line being 10,000 tons a day, on the right here, every line is 10 times the previous line. So we jump from 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 and then up to 100,000. So what that does is let us keep all the data on one plot, but you can see the details on the low end. So over here, between April and May of 2021, this all just looks like a flat line on the left plot. But with our log scale, you can see that during that time period, there was actually a continuous decrease in the SO2 that was being erupted. So all of my plots from now on are gonna be in this log scale. So remember, it's still very high. Um, it's just a different number jump for these higher lines over here. And we can see the detail at the low end. So what's really interesting is that during this sort of middle period here where things sort of leveled off at about a thousand tons of SO2 per day in February into early March, what we saw was, now these are common events at Kilauea even before this eruption, tilt is in this blue line and that is showing when tilt goes down, Kilauea summit is deflating and then when it goes back up, it's inflating a little bit. Now what's inter interesting is that you can see in these sort of orangey brown circles, that's our SO2 emission rate. So when Kilauea was deflating, the SO2 was low, and then when it started inflating, the SO2 would go up again. So the SO2 sort of mimicked this deflation, and that's because the lava was also mimicking the, the inflation and deflation. The lava lake level would go up and down in the same way. And the gas is very linked to how much lava is coming out. So that's why we were able to see these sort of three different data sets linked really closely um, as Kilauea was inflating and deflating, which was pretty interesting. Now, our eruption sort of died off at the very end of May in 2021. And then we had another period with no eruption, no lava. So what that looked like in terms of the SO2 emission rate was very low emissions. So you can see here on our plot, here's 100. We had a couple days that were about 110 tons per day, but for the most part, SO2 emission rates when there was no lava over the summer was between about 50 and 100 tons per day. Now let's put that in context with previous eruptions. Here's our same plot again. And this blue line is 5,000 tons a day. So that is what was emitted by the lava lake that we had at the summit from 2008 to 2018. 
that lava lake was a relatively steady emitter and it averaged about 5,000 tons. So you can see, yes, uh, this December 20 eruption was around there for a while, but pretty quickly it ended up below that. So this eruption was not consistently putting out as much gas as the previous lava lake. Now 250, that's what the summit sort of averaged even before that 2008 lava lake. So when there was no lava at the surface before 2008, the summit still emitted about 250 tons a day on average of SO2. So we sort of pretty quickly crossed through that and ended up actually lower, closer to 50 tons a day or less, which is what we had between the 2018 activity and the 2020 eruption, part of which we had a water lake for. So emissions were very low during that water lake era, usually lower than 50 tons a day. In this interruptive period over the summer of 2021, we didn't really often get quite that low, about uh, down to 50 tons a day, but somewhere between that 50 and 100. So it was pretty close to that um, period between 2018 and 2020. Now, of course, we had another summit eruption show up at the very end of December of 2021. So here are just some pictures from really the first few minutes of that eruption. We happened to have some of our geologists out in the field doing field work south of Kilauea Summit. And so when they looked up, they could see this new gas plume rising. Um, and this is just a closer view as they got closer to the eruption site. So this, these are photos from the very beginning of that eruption of all the gas coming out early in the eruption sequence. So if we throw that on our same plot again, you can see that just like the December 2020 eruption, the September eruption started very high, even slightly higher, although we measured earlier in the eruption because the 2020 eruption started at night and we couldn't make our SO2 measurements uh, if there's no sunlight. So because the September eruption started in the afternoon, we got an emission rate right away. It was about 90,000 tons a day. But just like the December eruption, it dropped off very quickly over the next few days to a week back down to, again, we sort of crossed through this 5,000 tons a day from the, the older lava lake era. Now what I want to do is look at the two eruptions a little more closely, but on, on the same sort of plot, not in sequence, but let's overlay the eruption. So the December 2020 eruption is in blue and the September 2020 eruption is in red. And you can see for the first, so this is 30 days since the eruption started. This plot uh, goes about to not quite 40 days, maybe 37 days or so, so a month and a week. If these were all the same color, you wouldn't be able to tell these two eruptions apart. The gas emissions for both eruptions behaved very, very similar. High at the beginning, a quick decline, and then sort of a slower decline over the next month or so. And then we had this sort of lower plateau where things bounced around between about 2,000 and 6,000 tons a day. So like I said, that was the first four to five weeks of both of these eruptions. Things started to change after about a month in 2021, um, four to six weeks. So here's that section where things looked very similar. And then suddenly we had this very low SO2 emission rate for the 2020, 2021 eruption. We weren't sure what was going on, but obviously we just kept collecting data as time went by. And you can see, whereas the December eruption sort of stayed in this very narrow band of SO2 emission rates, just around or below a thousand tons a day, this most recent eruption in 2021 was all over the place, bouncing up and down between, these are about five to 6,000 tons a day on the high end, and these low ones are only about 120 tons per day. So this is very different between the two, eruption, two eruptions. One was pretty steady, and this new one is having these wild swings from day to day. Now what's happening there is that this new eruption has these lava pauses or lulls in activity where the lake almost cools completely over. There's only a little bit of lava at the surface. So that's what we're looking at in this video here on the left. You can see everything crusted over right there. It's very cold, not much lava, and then it surges back. And so it do, it's been doing this for the past month, every few days or so, this cycle of cooling, and then the lava surges back. And with that lava surge, that's where our high gas emission rates come. When the lava's cooled over, that's where we get the low emission rates, about 
you know, just over 100 tons per day. And what's happening is it's linked to that inflation and deflation again. So the same as the previous eruption with the lava and the gas and the, um, the tilt, that's the blue line on this plot, they're linked. It's just this eruption is much more drastic when we have these decreases in tilt, the lava completely slows down and cools over and we have 100 tons a day of SO2. Then it surges back and we have thousands of tons of SO2 per day with all that lava coming out. So it's, it's similar to the previous eruption, but just on a, on a bigger scale, bigger variations this time around. So what do those variations mean for VOG, for those of us living here on Hawaii Island? Well, any SO2 coming out means the potential for VOGI conditions. So if we had a constant emission rate, say it was always 2,000 tons a day, whether you get exposed to VOG or not depends mostly on whether the wind blows that plume in your direction. But now with a variable emission rate, there's another factor in there. Maybe the wind is blowing the plume in your direction, but if you're lucky, it'll be when Kilauea is paused and the emissions are only about 100 tons a day, and then the VOG won't be so bad. So you can always check out um, the VOG forecast and other information about VOG uh, for on the VMAP website or the VOG dashboard from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, and actually with this uh, September 2020, 2021 eruption, they put out a new format for this VOG model website. So check that out and you can see what it looks like now. You can look for SO2 or sulfate aerosols, which is what sulfur dioxide eventually uh, converts to in the atmosphere. And so I mentioned these differences between the 2020 and 2020 eruptions in terms of those wild swings in emission rate, but there's also a, a big similarity. So in addition to how much gas is coming out, just that emission rate, HVO also measures gas chemistry. We can do that with drones, with stations on the ground, or with these portable infrared spectrometers, which are what you see in the picture here. So we're measuring the chemistry of this gas that's coming out. So not just the SO2, but SO2, carbon dioxide, water, and other species like hydrogen chloride, things like that. So one of the main things that we look for in that chemistry is how much carbon dioxide is coming out. If there's more carbon in the form of carbon dioxide, it means that the magma is coming from deeper within the earth. It's newer, it's fresher, it's coming from down in the mantle, pretty deep. Whereas if there's low carbon dioxide, it means that yes, it's, it's new magma that's just reaching the surface as lava, but it's magma that sat around within Kilauea's uh, magma chamber for a while first. And as it sat there, some of that carbon dioxide leaked out over time. So when it finally erupts, a lot of the CO2 is already gone. So the erupting gas is less rich in carbon. So what we were seeing in our data from both the 2020 eruption and the 2021 eruption is that they are low in carbon dioxide. So what this means is that for both eruptions, the magma that comes out as lava was actually sitting away for a while already. This is not brand new magma from in the mantle. So that's one thing that we've learned uh, from the gas chemistry is that these eruptions, even though they're behaving a little bit differently on the surface, where that magma came from that sourced both of them is from a pretty similar place. It stayed in Kilauea for a while before erupting. Now, the last thing I'll cover, because I'm sure people have questions about it, is what about the East Rift Zone? You know, I've been talking a lot about all this going on at the summit, but we do have previous eruptive sites in Pu'uo'o and the Lower East Rift Zone from 2018. For Pu'uo'o emissions, we have two permanent continuous gas monitoring sites around Pu'uo'o, which detect whether there's SO2 coming from there or not. And you can see on this top graph, we did have SO2, you know, before that 2018 activity. During the 2018 activity, we were measuring SO2 on those East Rift Zone sites. But since then, this is flatline. Um, the, these spikes here are just when some of our HVO staff were there doing calibrations or maintenance on the site, but we're essentially down at zero. There's not SO2 that's detectable coming from Pu'uo'o. And for the lower East Rift Zone, we do periodic checks with portable instruments. So this is one of our um, summer student workers holding, this is the gas sensor on her back, and there's a tube that she can uh, suck in the gas with when she puts it closer to 
uh, degassing site. So we check those periodically at the eruptive sites and other places nearby that were um, affected by some of the ground heating. And we never detect SO2 there either. So SO2 would be a marker of potential activity and we don't see it at Pu'o'o anymore and we don't see it in the lower East Rift Zone anymore. I know that some people who live in subdivisions near the East Rift Zone sometimes can smell a little bit of a sulfury smell. Generally, that's going to be probably H2S. So sulfur, that's hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is the rotten egg smelling sulfur, whereas SO2 is, it's sharper, more like when you strike a match or set off fireworks. Um, so both of those sites, the Lower East Rift Zone and Pu'u'u'u, do still produce minor amounts of that hydrogen sulfide, the H2S. And under certain wind and weather conditions, you may get a little bit of that drifting into nearby uh, population centers and subdivisions. So if you smell a little bit of that, it's actually because human noses are even more sensitive to that hydrogen sulfide than we are to SO2. So even though there's just a tiny, tiny amount of H2S coming out of places like Pu'u'u'u, if it blows your way, you might smell it, but it doesn't mean that anything is necessarily going on with an eruption because, like I said, we're not seeing any SO2, and it's SO2 that's related to eruptions. So I'll wrap up there with this nice video of all that gas coming out when the September 2021 eruption started. So, as I said, some things were the same as the 2020 eruption. We had a new eruption each year. The magma and the gas were previously stored within Kilauea because of that low carbon. And throughout the whole sequence, throughout all of 2021, we're not seeing any SO2 on the East Rift Zone. And we do have some new interesting phenomenon with this 2021 eruption, these, these bigger swings in the SO2 and these lava pauses. Um, so that's been going on for the past month, and we'll just have to wait and see what goes on with the eruption and the degassing as we head into 2022. So thanks everyone for listening. I hope you learned something and mahalo.